is quarter sports back and today we had the USC to talk about the business that been flying around Trojan Nation so let's go and if you've been here before can you please hit that like please and if you ain't subscribed boy you better subscribe Disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. Trojan family, Trojan gang, fight all forever, it's in the building, man. So lately, I've been hearing USC family, you know, we've been discussing the offensive line. We ain't satisfied. We feel like we need a better offensive line going into the 2024 season, going into that Big Ten. You know what I'm saying? Especially I hear people talking about the right side. They feel like the left side is good with Paige and Pregnon, you know, and, and Monheim in the middle. But it seems like they worry about that right side with, with Mason Murphy and Alani Noya, Alani Noah and Tobias Raymond. Now, you heard Lincoln Riley say there's a lot of quality there, and I feel like that is quality, but it ain't no depth. Like, if we lose one of them linemen, it might be good, good night, especially if we lose somebody on the left side, right? And then the right side, like, the whole line got to need to stay healthy. So, do y'all think, first, I got two questions. Do y'all think, is this offensive line good enough if it stayed healthy, right? You, we know injuries might come here and there. And that and an injury probably would implode this offensive line, right? So, but do y'all think a, that's top five, top six with Noah Murphy, um, Pregnon, Page, Monheim, Raymond? Do y'all think that top six, if this stayed healthy, if somehow stayed healthy relative for the whole season, we do y'all think that's good enough for the Big Ten? Would that offensive line be putting in work? Or do y'all feel like we need upgrades? We need upgrades on that right side. We need to add more depth as well. So do you think we need a either upgrade in quality or we just need an upgrade in depth? What y'all think? Either way, it's two offensive linemen that I want y'all to take a look at and tell me what y'all think. Do y'all research right here? Just gonna be some little light research. You know, Chad Lindbergh. 6'6", 325, offensive tackle out of Georgia, played for Georgia, played in all 12 games last year. Didn't start, but he played in all 12 games. Whether it was a blowout or not, he got in the rotation. They couldn't keep him off the field, so he's to be looked at. And he's one of the top linemen in the portal. He got decent film. He, he a decent player, right? Then you got Marcus Bryant. A 6'6", 260 offensive lineman. He's a tackle as well with Lindbergh. Marcus Bryant had a breakout season last year at SMU. You know what I'm saying? He starred and shined. So he's looking for somewhere before he go to the NFL to have a bigger platform to showcase his talent to play out there on that field. Marcus Bryant, a beast at the USC, already showed interest. So it'd be interesting to see how it's go. I know he ain't necessarily trending in the USC right now. Neither of all these products is necessarily trending the USC right now. But USC got their NIL game right now. So anything's possible. A lot of these projections is from before USC had NILs. You know what I'm saying? And I know USC always did the money for the NIL transfer. But I just got a feeling that more donors now is donate more money more boosters because they they confident in this culture stuff i feel like a lot of donors and boosters i mean we in la so a lot of our alumni they ain't dumb like we we very inf information based out here in california and we ain't and it's a tough competition so we ain't gonna make no dumb investments so they i feel like 
they was waiting for the right coaching staff, Lincoln Riley, to show he really serious about this program and going in this program gonna do what it take at the top before people get fully funded and get fully start donating their money. With Eric Henderson and Aaron Don on them coming to practice now and this elite coaching staff, the Anton Lynn, I feel like everybody's bought in. I feel like everybody believes in like, okay, it's go time, let's go, and we gonna get this money. So I even think the uh the money the nil money for the transfer portal go increase so we gonna be in play for just about every player speaking of every player right usc just offered um michael terry a five-star athlete out of texas it's a big offer this kid is a baller you know what i'm saying play both sides he can ball, man. You know I'm going to get a video out on him and break down his film since he's the new offer that USC offer coming out of the 2025 class. Five star. So you know he just uber talented. So we're going to dive into that film on my next video. Check out Mike, Michael Terry, the athlete out of Texas. You, you know, he's been recruiting Texas, Georgia, and Florida hard. It looked like USC is trying to supplement the the Cali kids not coming with hitting Texas and Florida and Georgia hard. So it's interesting. I know USC is recruiting California players, but they ain't scared, man. Most of they most of they offers is out of state. I feel like Lincoln Riley and the staff. I ain't gonna lie. I feel like they kind of got a bad taste in their mouth with the Cali kids. I think. So many Cali kids didn't even give them a look. And that makes it surprising to them. Like, how many kids in Texas, Georgia, Florida who don't get a the hometown school, not even a look? Like, no chance at all. It was so many people like Brandon Bakers and the, the Aiden Breelands. It was so many players that didn't even give USC a look the time of day. And I know that they understand the NIL game and the, and, and the money in this before we had it. And, and these players leaning to other schools, going to Oregon and Texas. But the fact that they didn't even give USC the time. Like, they wasn't even trying to hear a pitch. They wasn't even coming to campus like that. It's some out states kids that come to usc campus more than the in-state kids so i feel like the 24 and the 23 class got the culture staff in lincoln riley like i gotta recruit usc as a national brand when we look at the recruiting board we gotta look at the whole country instead of you would usually start in california but i think now usc is like we just finna start with the best of the best usc is not ignoring california of course not but i i think it ain't got less prioritized because it's like okay these kids out here in california this generation they ain't like diehard usc fans like i know we didn't have the money to offer in 23 and 24 as the other schools but damn like we was getting no love from a lot of players like at all you know what i'm saying so it's like it's interesting to see USC going to this national brand like we recruit like we know their name or something. You feel me? And I just don't want the California players to get lost, man. Like, come on, man. How, like, how y'all don't want to represent? And it might have some. It might be harder for Cali kids because if USC get rolling by national players from down south and, and you know Texas, Georgia, Florida, from these other places, they probably keep going in that direction. Usually. The top players in, in, in California had first dibs on USC because USC was going to uh, uh, accept that commitment to keep that fence going and relationships and building the tradition of California players coming. Well, if Lincoln Riley build a powerhouse by nationally recruiting and not making California necessarily a priority, then it might stay like that. So it might be a lot of California kids that's, that's, that's four stars or three stars that would have been offered in most years, but ain't even offered now because they ain't looked at as, okay, we finna offer all the top talent. No, we finna offer the top talent in the nation. And then after we offer the top talent in the nation, then we finna squeeze what California got. But that's less spot for California kids. So the so the 2022, the 2023, the 2024 California kids might have might have messed it up. You know the Roger Pleasants and, and 
the, the Dakota Fields and the 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 Ryan Pelhams, the the Aileen Breelands, the um, so on and so on. Like so many kids, California kids, they didn't mess it up. I feel like in the future for 25, 26 kids, in the future for 25, 26 kids, the California kids that's only gonna get guaranteed offered. I'm telling you, is top five stars, type kids, top five, four stars in position needs. But if you look at USC recruiting board and the players they offer, they has offered more players out of state than California by far. By far. So thanks a lot, 2022, 2023, 2024 Cali kids. And y'all they made it, it gonna be harder for them to go as you to USC in the future because USC ain't gonna be begging no more. USC ain't gonna be begging no more. These California kids, please come, please come, you know, offering everyone, please come, nah. USC is just finna be offering the nation's top talent. Let right now, and it ain't even no kids from California in the Georgia class. I mean, in the California class, it's all Georgia and Texas kids. Let USC recruit a top five, top ten class with a majority of out of state kids. I'm telling you. It could be tough sledding for future Southern California kids. You know what I'm saying? All, all them four stars and three stars in California ain't gonna get offered no more. The offer list go for the start even going down more for the California kids. If it's a trend that they're not coming and these other players out of state is showing more interest, it's like why waste time? It's like the reverse. I remember see, seeing um Urban Meyer talk about when he was at Florida, they didn't even go to California to recruit because they knew it was a losing battle. They knew they was going to USC. But USC gonna be like, we ain't even gonna focus on California kids because we we know they go they want to go to Oregon and, and, and Washington and, and, and SEC schools. So if all the California kids want to go to Oregon for the pretty uniforms and the shiny helmets and the field nights and, and, all, and all that, and they want to go to SEC to the Tennessees, but shout out Tennessee and all them schools down there, then let them. Okay, if that's what y'all doing, then this is what we doing. Sometimes you got to pivot. If these group of players, if, if the California players ain't feeling it, and this generation and this a different generation type kids that want to go elsewhere, we got to reverse pivot and focus on the whole nation because we got the power to do that. All right. So that's another thing I was thinking about. Man, I hope that USC don't abandon trying to put a fence around Cali. You know what I'm saying? Even though I think we got the brand and the power to be able to do it. And recruit nationally have some sense. I just love Cali out and I just love our kids out here. But hey, if they ain't loving us, then we gonna have to. And then the other news I heard, Brandon Rice, I heard, you know, he getting a pre-draft visit for the 49ers. So that'll be that'll be dope to see Brandon Rice go to a good team. A Super Bowl team with a decent quarterback and he could ball out and he could hit the ground running and continue to trends a successful receivers in the NFL for USC, man. So I just want to bring y'all this news. I just want to know what y'all think about the offensive line situation. It's look like we most definitely gonna have to add like two or three linemen. I ain't gonna lie to feel comfortable, right? We just offer five-star athlete. Michael Terry out of Texas again hammering home how USC is focusing on being a national recruiting brand this is the first time I've really seen you not even in the Pete Carroll we tried to be this national but hey if it gonna work it gonna work you know what I'm saying so it's Carter Sports it's Trojan City it's USC so let's go